Welcome to version 2 beta of the plating generator and thanks for getting the add-on. It's been 4 years since it was first released and the parameters panel and features have grown and grown and grown. So not only was it high time I moved the parameters to a new fixed side panel, a more significant improvement is the ability for the add-on to remember your changes so you can go back and change your plating at any time. I'll cover this in this video and a few more features, including the ability to build up new plating and greeble patterns on top of each other using something called levels. New documentation is also available, now on its own website, a link for which is in the description. I'm going to keep version 1 of the plating generator around for now, as this has been a big change and no doubt there are a few bugs, so please do get in touch if you do find anything. OK, let's press tab to enter edit mode in this cube and subdivide it. Here I'm right clicking on the cube and selecting the subdivide option. Now let's select some faces. Press the N key to bring up the right hand properties panels in the viewport if you cannot see them already. Select the new plating generator tab. Nothing will be shown yet because we are yet to create any plates or greebles. You can now right click on the cube to access the plating generator options in the pop-up context menu. Go to the sub menu imaginatively entitled plating generator. You'll be presented with a few options on the sub menu. The first two allow you to start creating plates or greebles in a non-destructive way. The last two let you edit the mesh directly as before. Let's select the first item called add plates. Here, some standard plating has been created in a new object called Cube Plating. This is because the object is a standard Blender object, but also includes some additional properties about what sort of panels or greebles you are creating. The key thing is, you can change these properties even if you go and edit other parts of your scene. Let's change the Master Seed parameter to the top of the panel by clicking on the small refresh button next to it to randomly change it. You'll see that different variations of the plating pattern occur. Even if you click away, by clicking back on the plating object you can bring back its parameters. Let's expand the properties subpanel so that we tumble further down the rabbit hole. You'll see that all the parameters from previous versions of the plating generator are present and changing any of these will update the object accordingly. For instance, changing the height and taper parameters allow you to alter the appearance of the plates and you can always go back to the object and change them again. Let's create a few more plating and greeble objects. Go back to the cube and select a different set of faces right click to get the plating generator menu and perform the operation again. For one of them let's add some standard greebles instead from the default library. You'll see the same panel appear, this time with all the parameters for controlling greebles. Let's change the colours of these panels a little. Go back to select the first plating object and go to the material section. Check the box add vertex colours. This will add different vertex colours to each plate, but we'll have to add just one node to the shader to make this happen. Go to the shader tab along the top and with the object's standard material add a vertex colour node. Plug this into the base colour input for the material. You should see the viewport preview change so that all the colours on the plates are visible. The other objects are black because although they have the same material, they don't have any vertex colours. Let's add one more optional node for fun, the gradient ramp node. This will map the colours to a grey scale value by default. I like grey. So what happens if I want to change the original face selection the plating object was associated with? This can also be done through the pop-up menu. Go back to the original cube and select some different faces. Let's say we've changed our mind about where the plates need to go, or if we have changed this underlying object in some way. Right click and go to the same plating generator menu and this time select update plating selection 4 and select the plating object you wish to change. 
you should see the relevant plating object update to the new selection. You also have a couple of additional options, such as retrieving the original selection of the plates and also copying the plates to a brand new object. The next new feature to talk about is the Levels interface. This allows you to build up different plating patterns or greebles inside the same object. Go to one of the objects you've created, look at the plating panel and expand the Levels section. Think of levels as a bit like layers in Photoshop or GIMP. Let's add a new level by clicking the Add button. Nothing will happen yet because the level is disabled by default, hence the red unchecked button next to the entry. This allows you to change properties without the object updating, especially in a complex setup. Enter a meaningful name for the level and let's add some extra plates on top of the plates we have already created. Change the seed value, which is on the level entry, to something different. Increase the subdivisions to 1 in the plating pattern panel and let's increase the panel heights to something slightly higher. OK, let's click the Enable checkbox. You should see the panels being created alongside the other panels. This is because the panels are also being built on the original object. But you can also get the panels to build on top of other le levels below it. On the Build On section, select the base level, which is the default level that is always created. You'll now see that the plates are being built on top of the previous level of plates. We could change these to build on the sides of the plates if we wish, or even both. Add one more level for now, but let's add some greebles this time. Switch this level's type to greebles, and make sure we now build on the second level. Click Enable. You may need to increase the greeble amount under the greeble pattern a little, but you'll see small greeble objects from the standard library appear. You can see and control all these objects as before by expanding the greeble objects from library section. That's basically it for levels. The controls are covered in more detail in the documentation. However, the last thing I'd say is with great power comes great responsibility. Or in other words, the ability to cause Blender to freeze the more levels you add. So do be careful when adding more levels, and save regularly. There are a few more features to cover, such as the iterator, but they are worth a video in their own right. In the meantime, this is covered in the documentation, which I encourage you to at least take a passing look at. I really welcome feedback on this update, and hope you find it useful. Stay tuned for more updates, and I'll see you next time.